the senator from Texas. Mr. President, last um, week I spoke on the Senate floor about the perils of socialism. I never thought in my entire life that I would have to do something like that. But given the rise of democratic socialists, which obviously is a contradiction in term, I think it's important to remind the American people about the failures of socialism, as well as radical policies like the ones the Democrats are trying to push off on the American people. If you want to know what command and control economies are and what it would mean to our freedom and our liberty, all you need to do is look at the Green New Deal. This is really nothing more than an attempt to mask this power grab by the federal government in feel-good environmental policy by mixing ideas like Medicare for all and guaranteed jobs with unrealistic economic and environmental policies. With a colleague from mission, Texas yield for a question I will, instead of just filibustering what he says. Mr. President, I would, uh, Senator from I Texas would, has I would the yield would, for a question after I conclude my remarks, not to be interrupted. I would simply want to ask the gentleman if he order, believes Mr. climate President. change is Senator real, from Texas has caused by humans. We know what he's not for. What is he the for? The senator will yield. The senator from Texas has the floor. Mr. President, I'm not for socialism. I'm not for Washington, D.C., thinking they know better than what my constituents know. About but he yield for a lives. question and say what he is yield. for. I will not, the not senator what he's against, Texas, what he is for. The senator will be in order. Mr. President, the senator from Texas Mr. President, the if the Democratic leader will just he be declines quiet. to yield. If he'll senator be quiet Jackie for a minute, I'll tell him what I'm for. If he'll just quit interrupting. So what this is is an attempt, it's a, really a power grab here in Washington, masked as feel-good environmental policy, mixes in ideas like Medicare for all and guaranteed jobs with wildly unrealistic and radical environmental policies like zero net emission transportation systems and guaranteed green housing. Since this resolution was proposed, it's gained the ire of people on both sides of the aisle, something we don't see that often, and something I don't know if I've, that I've ever seen. One of this bill's authors referred to the majority leader's intent to bring this resolution to the floor as sabotage. Now, ordinarily, when you introduce an idea in the United States Congress, you you, you are begging the majority leader to put it on the floor, the committee chairman to put it through committee so you can advance your idea. But when the majority leader said he would do that to the Green New Deal, it was called sabotage. Since the Green New Deal was rolled out, things in Washington have gotten increasingly wacky and believe it or not, even crazier. We recently put a price tag on the Green New Deal you heard the senator from Iowa talk about the $93 trillion. That's so much money, I doubt that most of us can wrap our brain around it. It's kind of like if somebody tells you the Earth is 140 million miles from Mars. How do you conceptualize of that? You have no point of reference to understand just how far that really is. But let me put it this way. If you combine the gross domestic product of every single country in 2017, every single country on the planet in 2017, the price of the Green New Deal would be higher than that. If you totaled up how much the United States has spent, the U.S. government, since the Constitution was, went into effect in 1789, the price of the Green New Deal would still be higher. If you total up the value of one year's worth of oil and gas production in Texas, it would take almost seven centuries seven centuries of production to pay for the Green New Deal. Margaret Thatcher, who had a gift for words, said the problem with socialism is that eventually you run out of other people's money. Well, in this case, you don't even have the money to begin with, but that's what this is really about. This is the antithesis of what our founders believed in when they founded the U.S. of America, the United States of America. They believed that Checks and balances and separated powers were a protection of our individual liberty and our light, right to make decisions for ourselves and our families. They viewed the concentration of power that would be necessary to do something like the Green New Deal as the opposite, the, the antagonistic to, to individual liberty. And so, Mr. President, things like eradicating air travel clearly aren't the answer. 
Mr. President, I'd like to ask a question about the Chinese. You saw our friend, the senator from Hawaii, say that that wouldn't work very well if you tried to get to uh, Hawaii from uh, Washington, D.C. No matter what your perspectives on energy are or the environment, I think every one of us can single out something we can agree on, and that is smarter policies that won't bankrupt our country. The solution is not the Green New Deal or another government power grab. It's all about innovation Mr. President, and the creativity Mr. President, of Americans doing research and science to Mr. come President, up with new and innovative Will the senator yield for a problem. second? The senator from Texas has the floor. Mr. President, he's declined, I, would, he's declined I, would just, I would just seek to be recognized, so to just ask the senator if the, senator the cannot $93 be recognized. trillion dollar number comes from a Koch Brothers senator funded has, organization. The Mr. senator from Massachusetts will suspend. Mr. The Senate will be in order. The senator from Texas has the floor. Mr. President, I've noticed one thing when people around here, colleagues across the aisle, don't like what they're hearing, they try to suppress or drown out dissenting voices. I think the American people need to hear this debate because our ability to innovate is critical to our, the success of our economy and our competitiveness in the global economy. Investing in science and technology and increasing our ability to innovate is an important part of keeping our economy strong. Rather than the government seizing control of nearly every industry, over-regulating their activities as you would under the Green New Deal, we should harness the power of the private sector to drive real, affordable solutions. And that's how we find cutting-edge solution, cutting solutions to our biggest challenges. A lot of folks try to paint with broad strokes about energy. You're either on the side of innovation and new technologies, or you're in favor of traditional oil and gas development. Well, I'm proud to come from a state that believes truly in all of the, the, the above approach. We generate more electricity from wind than any other state in the country. And we believe in all of the above. You don't have to pick one or the other. Not only do we lead the nation in oil and gas production, we also lead, as I said, in wind energy production too. We're proof that you can implement policies that get government out of the way and leave industry experts to do their jobs. You can be pro-energy, pro-innovation, and pro-growth. The Green New Deal is not the answer to our problems. It is a solution in search of a problem. And it is a naked power grab by Washington, D.C., seeking to impose on each and every American how we should run our lives. It is the opposite of the individual liberty and freedom that our founders believed our country would be based on. I hope in the coming months we'll take steps to promote freedom and not more government control and ideas that lead to innovation, not socialist policies. Uh, Mr. President, Mr. President, I yield to my, Mr. Uh, President, my friend from Indiana.